Hey, wait, can we check to see if like, the lapel and everything is good? Yeah, like, you need to check it out. Yeah, my grandma's gonna kill me. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, told Doran, Coach Doran, on Sunday, he said that they would have to amputate a part of your body for you not to play today. What was this process of this week like, going through not being able to practice, but understanding that that's what's necessary for you to be able to do what you did today? Um, it's a grind. We have great guys like Tony got hurt, and it's really just for the seniors. Uh, we have a great uh, training staff like Justin, and they do a great job of taking care of me every weekend. It's really like growing up here, it's just really important for me to play in this game, and I just knew I would not miss this game or anything. I basically just had to break an arm or a leg not to play. So uh, it was really just a great job by Alon for keeping me safe tonight, and uh, the training staff really just did a great job all week uh, getting me ready to play. Emotionally, what was the week like for you? Um, <laughs> a lot of testing, a lot of. Uh, Waking up early, going to treatment, and a lot of like sleeping. So probably this is the most I probably slept since I was like a kid. Probably so had a great week. When Did you, you ever have any first... doubts about making it through the protocol? Uh, no, just uh, I had to trust my body and listen to what my body said. My body uh, told me I was okay, so I was just um, excited to get cleared. Um, and I uh, just had to go out there and just see what happens. What Coach said you didn't do you? anything until Friday when you did finally do something yesterday. What was it? I uh, just ran. I had to do some up downs. Uh, Coach Kitchen was kind of mad. I hit a I hit a front flip on the film and stuck the landing like I was a gymnast. So I uh, thought I was really I thought I was cleared to play, and uh, he definitely let me hear about it on film. So that's three sports. Uh, yeah, I've I've been a tumbler and flipping since I was like in seventh grade. So I had to show off one of my talents. Like what, was, what was going through your mind through that, uh, after that first touchdown? And did it seem like it was like a sigh of relief almost? Uh, yes, it was It was kind of like shark mentality. I smelt blood in the water, and uh, we all did. So after the first one, it was just a relief. And uh, the line, everybody was really excited, and uh, the line was like, we're about to go get another one. And uh, we got another one. So I think it was just a really great job. Tony got hurt. Uh, Josh, uh, Fed Jackson stepped in, and we didn't miss a, a beat of offense. So I think really it was just, this game was won by uh, the line. When do you know that you've broken a big run, like on the first one or the second one? Even when did you know you were going to the end zone? Uh, just kind of uh, when I get past the uh, first level and I see the linebackers and they can't really touch me, I kind of know. And uh, really, I look at the jumbotron sometimes and just try to make sure nobody catches me or nobody tackles me at the one. <laughs> You're watching a replay before it's replayed. Uh, it's, sometimes it's, it's actually better because uh, you can actually like still look ahead and run instead of like looking. Um, I'm a track guy, so you know when you turn your head, you're losing speed. So uh, sometimes being able to look at the jumbotron helps. How, Jacoby how said that uh, people always say you're a track athlete who happens to play football. But he said, no, no, no. He's a football player who runs a little track. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I always try to uh, clarify that a lot of people think track guys are soft. And uh, track guys really aren't soft, but uh, I think track really helped me make, make me be the football player I am. And uh, I'm just a football player that likes to compete. It doesn't matter if we're playing checkers, chess, or football. I'm going to try to beat you with everything I got. So I really just wanted to compete. How Those disappointing sort of, was it not to score on a third straight run? How disappointing? <laughs> oh, I was, I was definitely going for it. But uh, you have to take what the defense gives you. And sometimes they'll give you four runs. Sometimes they'll give you... A four-yard run, sometimes you'll lose yards, but you have to stay patient. That's really how we won the game. We stay patient with the run, and when we needed it most, it popped. Most runs ever by an NC State running back against North Carolina. What does that mean to you and getting 1,000 yards? May you repeat it, please? What you say? <laughs> most yards ever by an NC State running back wow. against North Carolina. Wow. Um, and 1,000 yards for the season, which is the second year in a row after Matt last year. Let's talk about what those things mean to you. It's really important. Um, I came here because I, w I watched uh, NC State play this game and this rivalry, and I watched NC State through the great and bad. So it was just really important for me, and um, I'm really just humbled and uh, thanking the Lord because the line obviously was protecting me. I basically got untouched on both the runs. So, I mean, anytime you get to a second level untouched, that's just a testament to the line. Uh, You're going to hear from Bryce tonight? That was kind of